All right, Internet, three mistakes that you're making that may be causing you to lose a lot of matches. These are important, guys. We're going to jump right into it. Number one, you're trying to hit shots that are beyond your level. Let's get it. We're all guilty of this, right? Occasionally, we've hit this amazing death drop shot or the banana shot around the post. But just because we do it once doesn't mean necessarily it's our shot. And then we keep trying to summon it. We keep trying to hit shots that may not belong to us. Now, there is an exception if you're obviously running against an opponent that is, is at a much higher level, you're gonna have to play a little bit beyond your capabilities. But my suggestion is don't start there because keep in mind, the player that's better than you has the pressure. Make them make some balls. Maybe they're gonna have a really off day and your normal game is good enough to win. If not, then we do have to go for more. But too often, through the history, of, my history of working with players, juniors, adults, any and everybody, from beginners to professional players, one of the biggest things that we see is them going for shots that they simply should not go for. And consistently making these choices ultimately ends up in losing matches. <sighs> So the fix, what we want to do is figure out and identify what our weapons are and build patterns around those weapons. The pros do this better than anyone. They, it may surprise you to know that professional players, although they can do it all, really they're running a lot of the same plays over and over again. Think about this in basketball, right? If you are good, if you're a good basketball player, if you take a professional, they have several spots they really like to shoot from, and the team works to get them in their opening so they can shoot from their spot. Tennis is the same exact way. We want to hit particular targets that set up our weapon. All right, and that is how we build really good consistency, and then we're not taking the chance. We know exactly what our weapon is, and we lean into it. Ugh. All right, guys, so the second big mistake here is really just quite simply, you don't know what you don't know. This is actually a mistake that you might think is something that's helping you and it's actually hurting you. So let's talk about this. The concept here is you're paying way too much attention to what is going on on the other side of the court and not your own positioning. In other words, you're looking on the other side of the court and you're making decisions based on where your opponent is versus based on where you are in the court. This is very rec level. If you want to move to that advanced level of player, you're actually going to be prioritizing shot making decisions based on your own positioning or simply said playing offense when you're in an offensive position and playing defense when you're in a defensive position. So the big mistake here is we just see when you're pulled out wide, you're hitting the ball down the line. So what happens is I end up in a cross court rally with my opponent. I see that they're pulled really far out wide. That's sort of the last thing my brain processes before they start to recover to the middle. I then get a ball that pulls me out wide and I'm thinking, oh cool, they're still over here. I'm forgetting that this entire time they're recovering to the middle. And I, instead of hitting the ball back cross court, which would be the correct defensive play from this defensive zone, hit the ball aggressively down the line, take my time away and unless I hit it perfectly, my opponent gets there and redirects cross court and I actually lose the point. So a lot of players think, oh man, you know, I did damage. I pulled them really wide out cross court. I've got a ball. I should rip the ball line. You're actually making a mistake and putting yourself on defense where you're either going to be running or even immediately losing the point is they redirect that ball into open court space. All right, so we talked about the problem. The solution here is just understanding when you're on offense versus when you're on defense. Offense means you're pulled inside the court, or it means 
You're in the middle thirds of the court where you can set your feet. You can transfer your weight into your shot. You're not on the run. You're just in really good position to take a bigger cut at the ball and have more success. Again, when you're on defense, you're pulled out wide. Your positioning in the court's not good. You're getting backed up. You're getting pushed off the baseline or you're stretched and you're reaching. These are defensive situations and they require defensive responses. So the simple solution here, when you are in an offensive position, that is when you're gonna take your risks because they have a much higher percentage chance of panning out. The third mistake actually has to do with fatigue and how it affects decision making. Now the obvious win here is that we keep ourselves in better playing shape, that we don't allow ourselves to fatigue, particularly early matches. But no matter what you do, it's gonna happen. It happens to the pros. It's when you get tired, the decisions that you make that matter most. A lot of times we go for broke. These are the drop shots behind the baseline, going for a screaming winner, and they're just poor decisions. It's hitting on 17 in blackjack. It's close home to me. I've been doing this for a long, long time in teaching. I feel like I know the game pretty well. And all of a sudden, out of nowhere, I'll go for a drop shot that I have no business hitting. And the truth is, is that I'm tired. It can be conscious or unconscious. So here's the fix. When you get tired, it's the choices that you make that are gonna win the match, and it's calculated risk. If you get a weak second serve, be aggressive, more aggressive than you may normally be. Sneak in some serve and volley. Try to get to the net and shorten the point. See if you can't force your opponent into mistakes. When you're pulled out wide and you're in duress, play the ball up nice and high. Hit that reset and give yourself time to get back into court. But just trying to hit shots that you may or may not have is not going to win. Take calculated risk and survive the fatigue and get yourself back in the match. All right, team, so in summation, the mistakes that are costing us matches, number one, we're trying to play outside of our level, right? Just because you made the shot once doesn't mean it's necessarily yours. Build winning patterns around reliable weapons. Absolutely. Number two, you're just playing offense when you're actually on defense. Understand your positioning in the court and when it makes sense to attack versus play defense. And the final mistake has to do with fatigue and the decisions that you're making when you're tired. It's gonna happen to all of us. If it happens frequently, we gotta work on our conditioning. But when it does happen, make sure you're making calculated risks. Don't hit the drop shots from behind the baseline or go for screaming winners. Sneak in some serve and volley play through the middle, take away the angles, and if you get a meatball serve, that's the time to attack. That's right, guys. Obviously, to practice this stuff, you need to get out there, get some practice matches in. If you don't have a practice partner in your area, hey, be sure and check do. out the Player Court community. It just yeah. so happens we have yeah, that so absolutely for you for just $8 a month. So check that out. Also, if you like this video, comment down below. If you don't like this video, also comment down below. All right, awesome. And we'll see you guys in the next <laughs> one. See you guys.